Hey guys, my name is Kevin. Welcome to a new series on none other than the Baritone Ukulele. This is a beautiful Kala, Ebony, and Spruce Baritone Acoustic Electric Ukulele that I'm going to be playing in this series. I'll leave a link to it in the description. However, today we are going to talk about a couple of different concepts on how to get started playing the Baritone. You just went to the store or you just ordered one online and you're trying to get started, we're going to cover playing position, the string names, a couple of basic strumming patterns, and a few chords here just to get you kind of acclimated with the instrument. And as we go throughout the series, we'll kind of gradually build on the content here and show you some more strumming patterns and different cool things you can do with your baritone ukulele. So get tuned up and let's get started. The first thing that we need to talk about with baritone ukulele is the tuning. So the tuning of a baritone is different than the standard tuning of a tenor, soprano, or concert ukulele in the sense that the strings are tuned down a fourth from the standard ukulele. So all that means is, if you ever played guitar, you're playing the bottom four strings of the guitar right here. So the tuning is D, G, B, and E. So if you're coming from the world of playing the standard ukulele, the good news is you don't have to learn any new chord shapes, you just need to learn how to name the new chords. And you're in luck, we will have a chord chart linked in the description as well, so that you can get acclimated with all the chords, in addition to some of the chords we're gonna cover today. So as far as tuning the instrument, I'd recommend getting one of these little guys here, a clip-on tuner. They're very nice to have to help you keep your instrument in tune. Let's say you're playing around a bunch of other people and there's other noise. These little guys pick up just the vibration of your instrument to help you get in better tune. So first things first, get tuned up to D, G, B, E, and then let's talk a little bit about your playing position. With a baritone, you're dealing with a little bit of a bigger body with the instrument. You're dealing with an instrument now that's 30 inches long. Compared to those little sopranos, it's quite a large difference. But the playing position is equally as important here. So the way that I like to hold the baritone is at about a 45 degree angle. I let the bottom of the body here rest on my upper right thigh. That's going for righties. This would be the opposite if you're a lefty. And I like to brace the instrument nice and taut up against my body. Now, with my strumming hand, I like to come across at a 45 degree angle here and have my middle finger basically going down to the edge. Now, this uke has a cutaway in it, so I could go a little bit further. But generally, you want your palm resting here right over the sound hole of the instrument. And the reason for that is this arm is going to create your brace here. So you should be able to take the instrument with one arm and just hold it here steadily by bracing the instrument up against your torso and using your forearm to kind of hold the top of the instrument here. So the last thing you want is this thing slipping away from you as you're playing. So if you don't have a strap, you should be able to take this one hand here and hold the instrument. So my left arm here, in the case that I am a righty, is freely swinging. So I don't want my elbow down here resting on my leg. I want to have a nice loose wrist here. And the reason for this is, is this is going to affect how I play my chords. If I'm getting my arm in bad position, that's only going to hinder me as I'm trying to get in good chord position. So playing position is one of the most important foundational elements to playing an instrument because it really affects your tone and it also affects your ability to play chords. The more challenging the chord, the more important the playing position is. So I like being at this 45 degree angle and my sight line here, I like to be able to see the face of the fretboard of the instrument. You don't want it turned out so that you can't see it and you don't want too much of an angle where it's flat like this because this causes you to have to wrap your wrist around. So try to find that sweet spot. Everybody's shaped a little bit differently. So it's okay to kind of make adjustments that fit you. So that is the demo on playing position. I will say the only other way I would recommend playing this is if you are a guitar player and you want to kind of put 
the instrument down a little bit lower, depending on your body type and size here. That's okay too. I don't really like this position because I feel like it takes the neck a little too far away from your eyesight. So I prefer the 45 degree angle with my eyes able to get close here to the fretboard and have my strumming hand in nice good position. So those are the proper elements to plane position for the baritone. All right, let's get to the fun stuff here. So let's take a look at your first chord. So the first chord that I would suggest you learn on the baritone is the G chord. Now the G chord, if you're coming from the other world of standard tuning ukulele, <clears throat> you might know this as the C chord, but on the baritone, it's a G chord. So all you'll need is your ring finger here on the E string on the third fret. And you'll just play that nice and close to the fret here. So these little metal bars are the actual frets. When I refer to a fret, I'm actually talking about the space between. So you want your finger to be leaving a little sliver of light between your finger and the fret itself. So with a nice angle here at my last knuckle and using my thumb right in the back of the middle of the neck to create that good pinch to make sure that you're getting adequate pressure on the instrument. So when I play that, and I'll just strum this with my thumb, you can hear it here. This is what a G chord would sound like. Nice and warm, nice and easy, beautiful chord. So that's your first major chord to start off with on the baritone. The second chord I would like you to learn is the E minor chord. So the E minor chord, we'll just play with our middle finger here, and that's going to be up on the D string on the second fret. Now it's very important here that you get on your fingertip and make sure that you're not touching any of the strings below. You're just touching the string that you're meaning to press down, which is the D string. So that E minor chord will sound like this. So a nice little uh, melancholy chord here. Another pretty one. And your first two finger chord will be the C major chord. So if you're already playing an E minor chord here with your middle finger on the second fret on the D string, simply add your index finger to the B string on the first fret. So you wanna really make sure you're on your fingertips for this one, right in the middle of your fingertips. It's probably preferred that you have short nails if you're gonna be uh, taking on this instrument endeavor. Stay right on your fingertips and play that beautiful sounding C major chord. And then our fourth chord, which is a three finger chord here, I'm going to teach you is D7. So all we'll do is rotate down. We're going to keep our index finger here on the first fret on the B string. We're going to move our middle finger down a string to the G string and our ring finger here down to the E string. We're going to play this shape here. So this is a D7 chord, and you'll notice here that my hand is in this kind of nice tilted position. I'm not playing it flat here. If you look at how uncomfortable my arm looks as it's tucked in here, kind of swinging my arm out, trying to keep it in line with it perpendicular to the neck, and then tilting my hand out towards the headstock is going to create better spacing. The nice thing about baritone is if you're somebody with larger hands, larger fingers, or thicker fingers, the fret spacing on a baritone is awesome because you have more of it. So you have more real estate to work with. You don't have to tuck your fingers into these really tight positions. You have a little bit more space to work with here. So again, this is the D7 chord. So we looked at first the G chord, the E minor chord, the C chord, and the D7 chord. So you're in luck with those four chords. You could play literally hundreds of songs, but now I'm gonna teach you how to strum this beautiful instrument here. I'm just gonna hold down a G chord while I demonstrate here for you. So just uh, put the ring finger on the third fret there on the E string. Now when I strum, again, this is where playing position comes into the equation. We wanna be in good playing position here so that we can just strum using our wrist. So my arm isn't actually gonna be making the movement here. It's just gonna be a movement within the body of the instrument. So it's nice and concise. I'm gonna be strumming here, 
over the sweet spot, which I consider to be from about the back of the sound hole to where the body of the instrument and the neck meet. So you have this area here to strum. So that's why your arm wants to be in plain position with your hand in this area so that you can kind of maintain the sweet spot while you strum. The first thing you want to do is make a hook shape with your index finger. So you're going to take this hand here, whether it be your right or your left, and you're going to hook your index finger above the strings. Now, when you do that, again, you're going to hold a G chord. You're going to just take your finger and brush it through all four of the strings. Now, as I did that, I brushed and opened my finger as I went through. Now, when I come back up, I'm going to use sort of the pad of my finger to brush and close the hook as I go back up. So just do that with me, and we're just going to strum down, up, and I will count one and. So as I say one, that's the down strum, and up will be and. So let's just try that nice and slow so you can get acclimated, start kind of feeling the warmth of the baritone. So here we go. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and ah. And you don't have to brush with a lot of intensity. Just nice. You have a lot of resonance coming from the big body of this instrument, so you don't have to attack the strings very much to get a nice warm tone. So that is a strum that you could use for pretty much anything in 4-4 time if you just wanted to keep it very simple. Another strumming pattern that I like if you're just getting started is the down-up clap. And that adds a little bit of a percussive element, which I think sounds really cool. And again, you can apply this to a lot of different songs. So again, we'll hold the G chord here while we do this. And to execute this strum, we'll go down with our hook shape here, up with our hook shape, and then we're going to take our hand and cover the sound hole. So as I do that all at once, it's down, up, clap, down, up, clap, down, up, clap, one and two, one and two. So why don't you guys try that with me at home now? So again, I'll be holding a G chord here, and I'll just count us through this and we'll just kind of take our time here getting used to the strumming pattern. So one, two, three, four. Down, up, clap. Down, up, clap. One and two, three and four. Keep it going. One and two, three and four. One and two, three and four. Great job. That is a couple of strumming patterns that you can use just to get started. And throughout this series, we'll add some different strumming patterns and introduce you to some more chords. But right now, we're going to take a look at a couple of short play-alongs so you can get started with these first couple of chords, get acclimated with the instrument a little bit more, and have some fun playing your new baritone. So let's get to it. I picked out a nice easy chord progression to get you started. And again, you could use these chords in a lot of different combinations with a strumming pattern down up that we're going to use for the first play along here. So the chord sequence that we'll use to get started here is G, E minor, C, and D7. So each one of those chords will take four strums. And each one of those strums is just going to be down, up. So that will count as one. So the down strum is one, the up strum is and. So I'll do four on each. We'll go nice and slow here. Just try to kind of relax, stay with me as we play, enjoy the nice warm sound of the baritone. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One and two.
one more time just for just for fun. Alright, for the second progression we're going to switch it up a little bit and we're going to use the down up clap strumming pattern. So again, that sounds like this. And we'll do that two times per chord and we're going to use a little different sequence here just to mix it up so you can kind of hear the different movements that happen here in the chord progression. So for this progression we'll start on an E minor, we'll move to a C chord, just adding our index finger. We'll go to the simple G chord, and then we're going to slide our ring finger over here to play the D7. So we'll do that two times per chord, just nice and relaxed, nice and slow. Focus on your timing, trying to stay with me. If you need to rewind and play this a few times, go for it. Get those extra repetitions. They're going to help and help you kind of get more confident with the instrument here. So I will also mention that as you're playing this, Try to watch your fretting hand rather than watching your strumming hand. Trust your strumming hand that's going to do the right thing and keep an eye on your chords so you kind of have that precision as you move through the progression. So here we go, starting on E minor. One, two, three, four. One and two, three and four. C and two, three and four. G and two. D7, 2, 3 and 4 again, 1 and 2, 3 and 4, C and 2, 3 and 4 to the G and 2, 3 and 4, D7, 2, one more time. Make sure you're smiling, having fun playing the baritone. Three and four, end on D7. Three and four. All right. Well, those were a couple really nice starting chord progressions for you to get going with the baritone, a couple of easy strums. I hope you found this video informative. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments below. If you have a baritone or you're thinking about getting a baritone, I'm going to leave a link in the description to this beautiful Kala ebony back spruce topped acoustic electric cutaway baritone. You can check it out on their website. I really love this instrument. I'm going to be doing a full review of this with sound examples so you can hear and learn about all of the specs of this awesome instrument. My name's Kevin. I thank you so much for watching our new series on baritone. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Click the little alert bell so that you know when the next lesson is coming out. And if you would like a PDF for this lesson where I'll outline the chord progression, and you can also get a chord chart at allforyouk.com. I've got a lot of cool resources for you over there. And now a whole new line of resources on baritone. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.